Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode of Basic Wilderness Survival. Today's topic is going to be about land navigation. So before we get too far into this, let me say that this is not going to be an advanced course on map and compass, GPS, anything like that. This is a basic course for the beginner. So if you're new to wilderness, you're new to uh, wilderness exploring, uh, you're getting into backpacking, or you're starting to hike outside of your area that you're comfortable with, you know, you're exploring more, this is perfect for you. Um, if, you're, if you're not familiar with how to read a map, the basics, the concepts of using a compass, then this is exactly what you're looking for. This is the video you're looking for. And if you're familiar with all this, this might be a good uh, brush up for you. This might be a good brush up video. So one of the things I'd like to talk about is that land navigation applies to not just wilderness, but urban environments, suburban, uh, traveling. So how long has it been since you've looked at a road atlas? You know, I still keep a road atlas in my car. Um, I bet there's a lot of people out there couldn't read this map, uh, including some of my family, as bad as I hate to say it. Every map is gonna have the basics on it. It's gonna tell you which way is north. See the north arrow? I know this seems very uh, rudimentary, but this is the basics. You know, this is, most people don't know how to look at a map and find what direction they're heading or know where they're going. So if we're looking at my map, my state, Kentucky, there's your north arrow there. Okay, and of course this is highways, roads, bridges. Now this is an older map, but I'm sure it's still close enough to where if you needed to find your way, you, you could. So another thing you can do that I highly recommend is getting a map of your city. These are great for bug out bags. Um, it tells you all the little side streets. It goes way in depth. And again, let's look at this thing. Let's see if we got, yep, looky there. So there, my friends, again, is your north arrow. So when you line up your compass, and I'll show you how to do that in just a minute, you know what direction you're traveling. So I highly recommend a map of your city. Where can you find these? Call your city, call your city office. Call um, your uh, chamber of commerce. I'm sure it won't be hard to find a map. In the event that we have a black sky scenario, where the power grid goes down and you can't use your phone because we've all gotten used to our phones, our GPS, our um, Apple CarPlay telling us where to go, including myself, you know, my GPS on my phone tells me, uh, gives me directions how to get to places all the time. But these are great backups because if something happens, we don't have that capability, that technology available to us. We want these. You want to have a map. So there's another good place to start. Get your atlas. Get your map, get your city map, where you're at. Next, I have maps of the locations which I explore. And these are printed off of SAR Topo, which is Search and Rescue Topo. Here's a satellite view of the same. And this is the area I, I frequent, I camp. This is the private park I always talk about. The whole key to land navigation is to know where you're going, okay? I know that sounds silly, but if everybody knew where they were going, we wouldn't have search and rescue, you wouldn't have um, people lost in the woods, you wouldn't have all these agencies that help find people who get lost. So this is a really good example of the five colors that are used on a map, and they're generally used. Brown is used for contour lines, green is for vegetation, blue is for water. So black is generally a man-made object of some sort the trail, railway, or building. And red shows major roadways, such as highways. So you can see this doesn't show any roadways, major roadways. These are all black or all side streets and small streets. Now, I don't want to get too deep into map reading. I want you to understand the basics. I want you to be able to look at a map and know what direction you're heading and what direction you need to head. Before we get started orientating the map, Let's look at the different types of compasses we have here. Now this is just a cheap survival kit that has all the neat little things in it, little ferro rod, what is that, oh, a little knife. I'm sure you've seen these advertised. This is called a little button compass, a button compass. Not a little button compass, but a button compass. But this one is actually smaller than most that you find. 
And you'll find these button compasses on keychains, paracord bracelets, uh, little cards like this, and so forth. So these little button compasses are very rarely accurate, okay? Uh, and usually, like this one, let me show you this one here. This is what they call just a little speed compass. This is straight out of the package, as you can see. I've got to open it up. This thing is junk. And how do I know? Look at all the bubbles. If your compass has bubbles in it, you've got problems. And that just doesn't have a bubble. That's got multiple bubbles. This thing is worthless. Because when you start... Oh, look how it shakes. That's crazy. This came out of another survival kit somebody gave me, and it's not worth two cents. I would give this to a kid to play with that was about three years old. Because all those bubbles are going to keep the needle from moving in the appropriate direction. So junk. Now if you notice on this, right here there's a little bubble inside that button compass. It still functions, but I wouldn't consider it to be um, very accurate. Okay, This compass here, this little uh, compass, has no water or no oil or anything in it. It is just like a spring... I don't, honestly, I don't know how that works, if it's a spring or what's in there, but it's not bad. It's old. It was from Uncle Bushcraft. It's a, it's a decent little compass, actually. Okay? And this is another, what they call, speed or racing compass. At least that's, all, that's what I've always heard them called. This is the one I carry backpacking. And you can see there's no bubbles in it. It floats freely. This is a good little compass, and this is a silver. This is a little silver compass. So this is great for backpacking, for hike, day hiking, for someone who just wants to know, okay, where's north? Now you get into your advanced compasses, like this silver here, that has more features on it. And we're not going to get into those, but I wanted to show it to you. But for this video, we're going to stick with your basic speed compass here, this little silver. So remember, when you're using a compass, you want to hold it away from your body. And hold it level and the reason you're doing that is you want to hold this away from anything metallic you want to keep it away from anything metallic like a picnic table that has uh, metal supports in it a um, shelter house that has the metal roof uh, your watch your phone anything that could disturb the reading on this compass keep the needle from pointing in the right direction which is which direction is the needle going to point the red needle is going to point north should always point north. And I'm going to use this other compass to back up what this one says. So let's find our north on this. Pointing north. Yes. Pointing north. Yes. So these two compasses match up perfectly. And that's what I'm looking for. How do we know what direction it's pointing? The red arrow points north. That is just the basics, but that's important to know that this always, the red arrow, points north. The white arrow, or whatever color it might be, yeah, this one's white also, points south, the opposite direction, which makes sense. Which means you know you're pointing, you're traveling east this way, west that way, north, east, south, and west. So let's put this on a map and see how it works. So if we look at this map, we notice it has north in the corner, but it also has a MN and a GN. It has grid north and magnetic north. So your needle is going to point to magnetic north. So what we need to do to orientate this map is find out which way is north with our compass. We know that north is facing this way, correct? So we're going to lay our map down. We're going to line up north with what the map says. Now, when we look at our map, we know which direction is north, which direction is south on the map, but also in how this applies to the way we're facing. So we know we're facing the north part of the map, which is up here. We're looking at this up in here. 
And then if we look right, we're looking over here. If we look left, we're looking over here. And then, of course, behind us is going to be south. That's how you orientate a map, to know which direction you're traveling. So for the people that subscribe to my channel and follow me, they probably know this already, this how to orientate a map. But if you don't, please leave a comment below. Let me know if this is helpful. If this is your first time watching Ugly Tent, or you're new to this series, or you're new to map reading, and you didn't know this, please leave a comment and say, do not know. It's okay. I'm, I'm hoping that people don't know this, that are watching, so that this is helpful to them. And that's the whole purpose of this basic wilderness survival, is to help you in the woods. Help you enjoy your time in the woods. Now, once I've figured out what direction I want to travel, let's say I'm going to travel north, then I take the compass. What I do is I line it up with my eyesight. You know, get it level with your eye, just like you are shooting a gun. And you want to find matching your needle, your north needle up, in the direction you want to go. Because I'm using north as, as the basics. We'll get into if you want to go south or if you want to go a different direction. We'll get into that next. But let's just, let's just keep it north, keep it simple. So if I'm heading north, I line this up, and I find a spot that I'm looking at. Now let's say I found this tree. Okay, I want to use this tree as an example. Or farther up, let's say another tree. The problem with using trees in the wilderness is they all look alike. When you're looking at it, you're like, oh, that's distinct. I can tell because of the, of the coloring on it, the, the way the limbs. And once you start moving around in the woods, that tree's going to look like every other tree. And you're going to think, what tree was I shooting at? So let's say you're deep into the woods and you get what's called wood shock. And the wood shock is to where everything, trees, rocks, terrain, starts to look the same. This is what will induce the panic. It's common for people to get turned around in the woods. You know, it's common for you to think everything looks the same. I've been there, you know, I've done that. I've been turned around and said, oh my goodness, where am I at? Everything looks the same. Take a minute, look at your map, look at your compass, and, and then get your bearings and say, oh yeah, I know where I'm at now. Okay, so when finding the direction we want to travel, uh, anything that's distinct that I can uh, point to and know it's not going to move. Know that no matter where I go, I can be able to see that object. So if I'm looking over here, see if I get it in frame. Yeah. There's a rock outcropping right here. So that is a very good point for me to aim at and stay on course. All right, so let's talk about how to change this to go in a different direction, okay? It's very simple, let me show you. So you see how this bezel moves, okay? So if I put, let's say I want to go this direction. Let's say I want to go this direction, okay? So this is the arrow is pointing the direction I want to go. But you see where my north arrow is? My north arrow is pointing this way, which is different than this direction I want to travel. And I need to stay on this path, not on this path. I need to stay going east and not north. So I'm going to move the bezel over to take that arrow underneath the bezel. They call that the doghouse or the red. And you put the red needle with the red arrow on the bezel. We'll move this over. And there you go. You see how easy that was? So now I've got red in the shed, where I've got red in the doghouse, whatever you want to call it. And I know that every time I line this compass up with north, this is the direction I want to be heading. So this will not change. These two points are going to stay the same because this is north. So as I start walking this direction, and I get off course a little bit, oh, where am I going? Okay, I can't remember which direction I'm going. So if I line up, if I don't, I don't move the bezel now, I've already set the bezel. If I line up my arrow with the bezel, okay, so now the red is in the shed. So the red needle is in that little red needle on the bezel, and I didn't move the bezel. This arrow here is telling me, you need to go this way. So I'm going to keep going this way. And I'm going to keep checking this point every so often to make sure that I stay on track. Does that make sense? See? There's direction of travel. 
and there's north. We're not moving this because we've already set it. So that's the basics of how to use a compass, and that's the basics of land navigation. So let's talk about decision points. This is straight out of the Basic Search and Rescue Handbook. The first class you attend with Basic Search and Rescue decision points is mentioned, and that's where you come upon a trail or a road that splits. It forks, goes right, goes left, goes in a direction that you're not sure which one to take. This becomes a decision point. So this is crucial. This is how you don't get lost in the woods. Or this is how you get lost in the woods, is you take the wrong way, the wrong path. So having a compass and being having a map and be able to find out where you're at, orientate the map, find the trail, find the points, and know which direction to head is, is crucial and is, is vital to not getting lost or making it a good trip a bad trip. You might not get lost, but you might go miles and miles out of your way, which I've done, uh, because I wasn't paying attention to my decision points. So that's something else to keep in mind when you're backpacking, hiking, or just out in the woods having fun. All right, so in conclusion, what did we take away from all this? One of the different types of compasses. So I recommend getting a good base plate compass, which is whether it's a little speed compass like this, or whether it's a really good compass like this. Find yourself a good compass. Now, there's different brands. I'm not going to get into that. But there are so many different brands, but just get you a really good high quality compass that you can carry and keep with you and make sure it stays, the compass stays healthy and you can read it. The bezel rotates, there's no bubbles, you know that it's a good compass and stays a good compass. Next, understand how to read maps and just understand by looking at a map which way is north, how to understand, how to orientate that map to where you know you're facing north and the map is facing north. Another thing to consider is staying on that line. You know, whether you're heading north or east or, or uh, northwest, whatever it is, how do I stay on that line? Get out and practice, you know, get out in the woods, get in your, in your neighborhood, take it out in your neighborhood, walk the neighborhood and use your compass and say, okay, I'm heading north now, uh, now I'm heading northeast, mess around with it before you get in the woods, before you have to use it in the woods to either self-rescue or to find someone else or find a point. Um, you know, under make sure you have a good understanding of all these things. And if you're a hiker, if you're a backpacker, you have to know these things. It's, I think it's essential for everyone to know these. If you're spending a lot of time in the woods, hunters, hikers, backpackers, um, survivalists, bushcrafters, anybody who spends a lot of time in the woods, you need to know how to do this. You need to know how to read a map, read a compass. Um, again, down the road, GPS, uh, how to read coordinates and get in, dive into that uh, a lot deeper than what this video goes into. So now that we've talked about the essentials of wilderness survival, let's talk about some of the fun stuff like your backpacks and your haversacks and stuff. So that'll be the next video. So thanks again. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share, and we'll see you on the next video.